In this video, we're going to introduce the relay-based electronic latch. Latches are used to make flip-flops, which we'll go over in the next video. No, not these flip-flops. Here we have three flip-flops acting as a binary up counter, which we'll need to make a digital clock. Importantly, latches and flip-flops are the basic unit of storage inside a microprocessor. This is the 6502 microprocessor used in the Apple II, Atari 2600 and Commodore 64. Internally, this is the design for the 6502. Now, I don't expect this to make any sense at the moment, but what I do want to point out is that all these highlighted green bits are just latches or flip-flops. Understanding how the latch and flip-flop works is fundamental to understanding how a computer works. The good news is that latches and flip-flops can be made using combinations of the gates we've already looked at, specifically the NOT gate, the OR gate, and the AND gate. The first electronic latch design appears in a 1918 patent by William Eccles and F.W. Jordan. It was used in 1943 by the British Colossus code-breaking computer. It was based on vacuum tubes rather than relays, but the Z3 by Conrad Zusa used relay-based flip-flops. OK, so what's an electronic latch? Well, let's first look at the common gate latch. It has two configurations or states, locked and unlocked, and it can't be in both states at once. If left alone, the latch will stay in its current state indefinitely, whether locked or unlocked. It doesn't spontaneously jump between locked and unlocked of its own accord. In fact, if it does, we get a new latch. Second, there's some mechanism to change the state from locked to unlocked or unlocked to locked, but it requires some sort of intervention. In this case, it's done by hand by physically moving the bar, but once it's in this new configuration, it stays in this new configuration. In a way, you could say that it's remembered the last change we made to it. Let's go back to the basic inverter. We know it has one input and one output. When the inputs are logical 0, the outputs are logical 1. And when the inputs are logical 1, the outputs are logical 0. Great, hopefully you've got that covered. Can we turn this to a latch by connecting the output back up to the input? Let's say the input is 0. The output will be 1 a short time later. This then feeds back to the input, and we output a 0. This then feeds back again, and the output becomes 1. This cycle continues forever. As expected, we can make this single inverter circuit using a relay, where the off contact of the switch is connected to the electromagnet of the same relay. When the relay is off, electricity will flow through the off contact and energize its own electromagnet, which will turn the switch on. But turning the switch on cuts off the electricity to the electromagnet. The coil de-energizes and it turns the switch back off. Now, back in the off position, electricity flows again to the electromagnet, which turns the switch on, and we continue this cycle indefinitely. The armature is moving too fast for it to be seen, but we can certainly hear it buzzing. If we look carefully, we can see some arcing across the contacts as they open and close. This circuit is said to be A-stable, and while it does have two states, it spontaneously jumps between these states, so it's not going to be very good for a latch. All good? Still with me? Now let's try something different. Let's start with two inverters. We connect the output of the first one to the input of the second. Then we connect the output of the second inverter back to the input of the first one. What do you think will happen? Stop for a moment and try and predict what a zero or a one on the leftmost input will do. OK, let's say the leftmost input is zero. The output of that inverter will be one. This is fed into the next inverter and its output will be zero. This zero feeds back to the first inverter, which outputs a one which in turn maintains the zero output on the second inverter. Now, let's change it and say the input to the leftmost inverter is 1. Its output will be zero. This feeds into the second inverter, which outputs a 1. 
The 1 feeds back to the input of the first inverter and the constant 1 is maintained. This means there are two stable states, one where the output is 0 and the other where the output is 1. This is said to be bistable. That's great in theory, but let's see if we can actually build this latch out of two relays. I've captured it in one state here where the output's on, and this is how electricity flows through that circuit. The relay on the right's off, but when its associated switch is in the off position, it actually illuminates the lamp and feeds back to the electromagnet to the relay on the left. This will be on and there'll be no flow of electricity through the first switch. In the alternate configuration, the relay on the left's off. Electricity flows through the off contact, which in turn keeps the second relay on. But in the on position, there's no electricity flow through the second switch, and the lamp will stay off. That's all good and well. We can be in one of two states, but how do we change between these two states? Well, we'll look at that in more detail in the next video. I've put a lamp on the off connection to each relay. Here it's in the 0110 configuration, and this is the 1001 configuration. How does this all relate to the original pattern from Eccles and Jordan? Well, their latch is based on vacuum tubes, which I don't recommend using due to the high voltages required, but with the eye of face, each tube with its resistors is acting as an inverter. The output of one inverter feeds into the input of the second, then its output feeds back into the first. Again, I can't stress how important it is that you get your head around this concept. In this binary up counter, there are actually six latches, and we'll look at how these are wired together in more detail in a future video. Finally, this type of latch based on two inverters is the basic unit of storage inside static RAM chips. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.